Hi, my name is Tom Sokolovsky and I'm a nutritional therapist. Today I'd like to talk to you about one way you can make a big difference in increasing your energy, increasing your ability to deal with stress and lose weight in the process and that's balancing blood sugar. First I want to talk a little bit about what stress is. So stress is your body preparing itself for an emergency situation. So you increase blood flow to your muscles, you release um, glucose from glycogen storage to have more energy available, your immune system and your gut slow down so that you can divert energy for more urgent needs, and you break down tissue like protein to generate more energy. Uh, the problem is, in modern life, is we're so driven to be doing and working and earning money and then often partying hard at the weekends that we don't have enough time to rest and recuperate, which is a very important phase uh, when you build up the protein that you've broken down during the stress response. Um, so when the stress is continuous and repeated and you don't have a chance to rest and recuperate, eventually what happens is that your body does not respond to the stress hormone cortisol the cells have receptors for the cortisol and they just stop um, responding to the cortisol. If they were to continue responding to the cortisol, you'd keep breaking down tissue until you, you, you would, there'd be nothing left of you. So this is an intelligent response by your body to a continuous and repeated stress without rest and recuperation. Now, we think of stress as uh, when we have, there's too many demands on us and as emotional stress, but stress is anything that raises the stress hormone cortisol in the body. So it can come from uh, nutrient deficiencies and toxins. These can raise cortisol in the body from calorie restriction, from too much exercise, from not enough exercise, from not sleeping enough, from stimulants like caffeine, uh, from um, drugs and alcohol. All of these will raise stress hormones. So it's not just about emotional stress. But another factor that raises stress hormones and puts a huge pressure on the stress response system is the modern diet. So we've been led to believe that fats are bad for us and as a result we eat carbohydrates for calories. Um, but carbohydrates in the high quantities we're eating them in the modern diet um, turn to blood sugar very fast. Uh, so when you eat carbohydrates, enzymes on the surface of your intestine perform the final step in breaking the carbohydrate down into simple sugars, and this causes a rise in blood sugar. The problem is that the carbohydrate content in our meals is so high that the blood sugar rises very high, and this is a dangerous situation. The sugar will bind to proteins, and when a sugar molecule, say this is a sugar molecule, binds to a protein, it changes the shape of the protein molecule, which means that the protein doesn't do what it's meant to do because um, a, the function of each protein depends on it having a very specific shape. So this damages tissue, you age from the inside out, it damages your nervous system, your cardiovascular system, your kidneys and your eyes can all get damaged from high blood sugar. So when you eat this carbohydrate meal and your blood sugar shoots up, your body protects you by releasing insulin. This causes the sugar to be stored in the cells as fat safely. However, with such high carbohydrate loads, the insulin tends to overshoot and you go from high blood sugar to low blood sugar, which is an emergency situation and low blood sugar is a stressor on the body and causes the body to release cortisol in an attempt to raise blood sugar again. At the same time, you'll be hungry, and this is when you'll reach for a carbohydrate snack. This will raise your blood sugar again, and insulin will kick in again, and then your blood sugar will drop again, and cortisol will kick in, and so on and so on. And this in itself, just this modern diet of high carbohydrates and high sugar, places a great pressure on your stress response system, and rapidly contributes to a lack of sensitivity of your cells to cortisol, also known as burnout. So cortisol is a, um, what gets you up and out of bed in the morning. So at this stage when you're not responding to cortisol you'll find it hard to get out of bed in the morning. You may need a coffee to get you going in the morning 
and you feel fatigued and less able to deal with the pressures of life. So by balancing blood sugar, we can help reverse the situation and give you more energy to deal with life and help you lose some weight because every time the insulin kicks in, you're storing sugar as fat. So how do we balance blood sugar? So firstly, avoid sugar and avoid fruit. Yes, fruit has lots of beneficial antioxidants, but whilst you're trying to balance blood sugar, uh, you should avoid fruit and then later bring it in as an occasional snack, maybe once a day, a small moderate portion. But initially, stop fruit. Now, when your blood sugar is balanced, you won't need to snack. You'll be able to go easily without eating for four to five hours. However, as you're balancing blood sugar, you will probably still need to snack. Um, so the trick here is to snack on non-carbohydrate foods. Snack on protein and fat and non-starchy vegetables. So things like eggs, nuts, seeds, tahini, coconut pieces, avocado, low-fat coconut yogurt. The one carbohydrate you can have is from beans or legumes. So things like hummus, you can dip. Um, some non-starchy vegetables into hummus for example. So this will help balance your blood sugar. So have your carbohydrates only with your three main meals of the day and limit the quantity to 20 to 25 grams. You can use a website like nutritiondata.self.com to calculate the carbohydrate content of your starchy foods. Remember that this website, as with all the US websites, the total carbohydrate figure includes dietary fiber. Now dietary fiber is not digestible carbohydrate. It's broken down by your gut flora, so it doesn't contribute to the rise in blood sugar. So subtract the dietary fiber from the total carbohydrate figure for your food to find out the total digestible carbohydrate figure. And that's what you want to keep between 20 and 25 grams at most per meal. Um, so also, uh, you only need to do this for the starchy foods like grains, potatoes, sweet potatoes, squashes, yams, plantains and the like. You don't need to calculate this for every piece of lettuce you eat. That would probably um, create more stress than it would save. Um, so the other thing is to focus with each meal on having at least half of your plate full of non-starchy vegetables to provide fibre and also have some fat and protein with the meal. So the fat, the protein and the fibre from the non-starchy vegetables slow down the release of sugar and satiate your appetite. Also the fibre feeds beneficial gut flora. They convert the fibre to short chain fatty acids which gives you an alternate energy source when your blood sugar is low and this helps you get through the night when you're asleep without needing to get up and snack. So also the type of carbohydrate is important. Wheat turns to sugar very fast, so it's best avoided. And the more refined the carbohydrate, the faster it will turn into blood sugar. So eat whole grains. Uh, avoid puffed grain products like rice cakes, which turn to sugar in your bloodstream very fast, and rice milk. Porridge can also raise blood sugar very fast in most people. And you can slow that down by adding some cinnamon or some ground nuts and seeds. Um, but it's best to avoid porridge. Also, potatoes can, can raise blood sugar very fast, but there's a trick here. If you allow the potatoes to cool, the starches form resistant starches. These are resistant to digestion, so instead of raising blood sugar, they will feed beneficial gut flora. So allow your potatoes to cool. You can then reheat them afterwards if you want to eat your potato hot, and the resistant starch will still be intact. And finally, you can add certain foods, include them with your carbohydrate meals to slow down the release of blood sugar. Things like avocado, extra virgin olive oil, vinegar, cinnamon, and nuts and seeds, especially freshly ground flaxseed, which feeds beneficial gut flora that help you balance blood sugar. So, to summarize, stress, continuous stress without rest will lead to insensitivity to cortisol, also known as burnout. So to increase your energy and lose weight and increase your capacity to deal with stress, balance your blood sugar. So avoid fruit and sugar, including natural sugars like date syrup and brown rice syrup, they're all sugars. 
Have only 20 to 25 grams of carbohydrate with your main meals. Include um, at least half your plate of non-starchy vegetables and some fat and protein at each of these main meals. Snack on just protein and fat and non-starchy vegetables and maybe a little bit of bean dip like hummus. And avoid over-processed grains and carbohydrates, wheat, porridge, puffed grain products like rice cakes and rice milk. Allow your potatoes to cool, you can reheat them afterwards. And you can also add avocado, extra virgin olive oil, vinegar, nuts and seeds, cinnamon and especially flaxseed to your carbohydrate meal to slow the release of sugar. If you do all of this, you will help balance blood sugar. You won't need to snack, which is healthier not to snack, and you can lose weight, increase your energy and your capacity to deal with stress and wake up feeling joyful in the morning. I hope you found this video interesting and helpful. Thank you for listening.